Foot Clan, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm on full tilt after a week full of injuries that are completely and utterly unfair. Brooks, he took me out. We're going to recover. We're going to try on the show today. Studs, duds, and a whole lot of Jay Grizz. Tune in. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with HelloFresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, if you've been looking to level up your financial portfolio, uh, level up. it is always good to diversify. Why not think about cryptocurrency? Backed by the world's leading investors, Coinbase keeps you your portfolio safe and secure while adding crypto into your mix. Mix it up. Mix it up. Add a little, add a little crypto, Mike. Uh, it's a trusted platform. It's easy to use. You can buy, sell, spend cryptocurrency on it. They support the most popular digital currencies, portfolio management protection. They have learning resources. They have a mobile app you can trade securely. And millions of people in over 100 countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash footballers. Sign up at coinbase.com slash footballers for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, ouch! <laughs> Welcome in. I was like, that was up there, man. I was doing an impersonation of uh, football. Just all of my players. <laughs> oh, brother. That was a Sunday. I can't get past it, Mike. I, I'm not trying to have I you. I can't do past. it. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. That was wait, wait, I don't even know where to start with, yeah, with mean, last week or with in, yesterday. Welcome into this show. <gasps> Jay Grizz doesn't care. His Ooh. team got a win. Um, Mike Did Wright, they? Andy Holloway, with you that this was morning. So long ago. I know. I know. <laughs> that was back when I still had all of my running. That backs. was this week. Yeah, that was Thanksgiving, Mike. It was a long weekend. It was nice. I mean, I liked that part of it. It was. Uh, we had the megalodon episode of the podcast which mm -hmm. was well received and uh hashtag dinner butter was trending on twitter uh, oh, which surprised oh. the crap out of us <laughs> andy do not be so humble with the trending of of dinner butter there was a point where it was the the number two overall trending topic in the united states of america just behind thanksgiving we could we tried we, we tried we tried to take the take the take thanksgiving out we couldn't get there, but we got up to number two somehow. I, I hope everybody enjoyed some dinner butter on Thanksgiving. We did uh, – well, we're going to select winners for our giveaway today, and we'll DM you. Uh, we added some more items, so we're giving away a signed Debo Samuel jersey, Stefan Diggs jersey, a signed Hollywood Brown cleat. Oh, baby. And a $100 gift card to shopballers.com, which – we will be adding a hashtag dinner butter shirt and oh, a right. yeah. I mean, at this point, <laughs> yeah, it's just a well. thing. Jason yeah. is Jason is not here with us today. He'll be back tomorrow. Um, oh, that's a good note from the production team. Yeah, you better have your DMs open. That's fair. If well, I guess if no, if you're following us, the the DMs should be open. So yeah, we should be able to get a hold of you. But uh, we'll give those away. We'll pick them and we'll announce them on tomorrow's show. So uh, thank you to everybody who got into the dinner butter spirit and uh it was we, a good time we also watched all of the football of the weekend lots took place we have studs and duds on today's show as we always do we we put a thread out on twitter we asked for your monday punday suggestions oh, some of these are good and let's uh let's go ahead and get sophisticated <laughs> mm. <laughs> i will begin this with leonard scornet or Leonard Quartet. <laughs> what about this one? Whoa, Mixon. I like this as well. <laughs> Lightning in a waddle. Oh, I love that song by the police. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of course, 
Yalen Waddle. We take low hanging fruit here. People, Nick, people love the yays. They do. Uh, Nick Flub. Oh, Jerry Poody. Or Wee Higgins, you son of a gun. And, and T.D. Higgins. Uh, George Little. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Who's, who wrote this one? Michael Sitman Jr. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Scam Newton. And Twiston McCaffrey. Twiston? I threw that in at the end. I oh, just I just needed something take, to... Taking a shot at the man's ankle? Well, what do you do now? I mean, Jason here on the show, he... he what, a month ago? <laughs> yeah. He said, what is wrong with your body? And you asked the question in the studio yesterday, like, is it just caught up to Christian McCaffrey? And I don't know because I, there are... Bad things happen to good people. He, that uh, It does, you know, as is life. Uh, I don't know, man. He he rolled his ankle. He left, I believe. Uh, I, I think JJ had tweeted out this was the first game of his career without a reception. I have not fully vetted yet, uh, vetted that yet. But I mean, it would make sense. Receptions were hard to come by with Cam Newton at quarterback. Oh my! Ooh. I mean, <laughs> I I saw Matt Rule talking about was- this situation. <laughs> Matt Rule is saying something, and I know this could go in the duds, but whatever. Uh, today, I don't really care. Today, I don't care at all. I mean, I'm a de- uh, to give you my context for this weekend, and Mike, you have your own. Mm-hmm. Brooks and I are facing each other in our dynasty league. I have a nine and two team. He's eight and three. He's on a hot streak. We're facing each other. He's got Joe Mixon and Leonard Fournette. I got Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, and Zeke on this roster in dynasty, and they all went down this week. And now he just beat me. He's got the bye week. Brooks, you're feeling pretty good, I imagine. Kia. <laughs> oh, yeah. what? He's what? He is. Kia. He is yeah, that's much better. Thirsty for a title in that league he too. He deserves one. He's had a great team, but I am. I can't take the injuries because the injuries subvert every effort that any fantasy player. Make so you know. I know DeAndre Swift was in this camp for people this week. Mm-hmm. Debo Samuel went down. Um, the injuries in fantasy football are by far the worst part of the game because you can do everything right and then you still have luck involved in the equation just on on how players play. And then the injuries just, they erase all the strategy that you did. I mean, it you could have made moves for, um, now Melvin Gordon came back into the game, right? Yes, he but did. But when he went down on the first play, I had a slew of Twitter messages that all said, "I just traded for him for the for the stretch oh, run," oh. and it now he came back in, but it was like you're you did everything right, and you can yep. still lose because of injury, and you have to either quit fantasy football or throw <laughs> or throw your hands up. And, and you do, and, and like I just I if I'm gonna fail, let me fail on the merits. Yes, of that player being terrible and not that's also not my fault. Right. Is only only the winning is my fault. The losing <laughs> is not my fault. It's theirs. <laughs> uh, yes, I uh, Jay Grizz agrees. Uh, that is how fantasy works. Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike has had just before getting to news and the studs. Mike has had some of the worst luck that I've ever seen in my life, and um, he went into the game last night with Lamar, and all he needed. All he needed in his entire to win the match Mm -hmm. was Lamar to not have the worst game of his entire career in fantasy, Mm -hmm. which he had. (laughs) And you lost by three. (laughs) I mean, at some point, the joke, like you've been setting yourself up and saying, here's what's going to happen. Lamar is going to have the worst game ever. But they all come true for you. It's been quite a year. Been quite a year. And you're here still. There was a lot of silence in the Wright household last night. My children were a little concerned for my well-being. I had to explain. There was silence in the Slack channel, which I know <laughs> what that means. It was, just just let Dad be upset right now. I know it seems silly to you, but this is important to me. And just let me work through my Daddy, emotions. Daddy, why is there broken glass everywhere? <laughs> Did you walk around the block a few times? Uh, I took the trash out. I did a lot of chores. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was, well, there's dishes to be done. There's some garbage that needs to go out. I did, as as I brought the cans out, it was, <laughs> do I, I think I might need to just go walk. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm like. So I paced around a little bit outside. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Neighbors staring across the way, going, What is that man? Why does he look so upset? Oh, yes. Um, the, the the resting angry face was actual angry face. Oh, that was just regular angry face. <laughs> it, it's fantasy football is a it's a son of a gun. We we could have a whole episode on how to deal with defeat because we all do it. So uh instead let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Ahead of week 12, we got the news that A.J. Brown was put on injured reserve. So, I mean, if, for everything you're feeling right now, playing fantasy football, like I'm saying that globally, imagine being the Tennessee Titans right now. This team has done everything right throughout the season. Of They have a contender. They're making the right decisions. And their star players are just decimated. No, they are no more. They are no more. No, no Henry, no Brown, no Julio. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Michael Carter was also placed on injured reserve before the weekend with a high ankle sprain, three games at least. And then there was a lot of talk about Matthew Stafford having, you know, the back is a chronic issue for him, having elbow pain. It's been up and down for the Rams this year. If If you look at their performances, sometimes they look like the best team in football. Other times they look like their defense is taking a step back and Matthew Stafford doesn't have it together. And, you know, they lost another game this weekend. Christian McCaffrey, it's a sprained ankle. X-rays were negative. So that it look that is good news. Uh oh, it's his buy is this week? Yes. So you he, weren't he might not miss any time. You weren't gonna have him regardless this week, and he could be back. Which just means he could break your heart. He'll again. have another chance to be started and destroy your soul. Early 2022 draft discussion, Mike. Sure. Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, I know they're at the top of people's lists, but with this injury to McCaffrey, is this part of the story now for him? Is 100%. The, yeah. You can't go two seasons of being the overall number one pick and then having these injuries and, and have it not affect how people view you. Jonathan Taylor will be locked in at the 101. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Like Christian McCaffrey. You don't think Hen Henry could end up in that discussion too? He, he could, but he's also hurt. And it's, I mean, a bit older, foot, coming off that foot injury. Right. I, I mean, to me, Taylor is likely locked in unless something wild happens. But McCaffrey could be a steal because he'll he might even drop to like, Three, four, five, because people will. They don't people, want to do it. People again. who are drafting up there will have like be like, "I'm not doing that again. I've done that for two years." Yeah, it's a long time. Much more concerning for the rest of the year. Dalvin Cook suffered oh, a dislocated man. shoulder in week twelve. He already has a torn labrum in the other shoulder. Uh, they're doing more imaging today to find out if the labrum's torn in the one he just hurt. And he's already had shoulder issues throughout his career. It was a. He bad might not be done. He might not. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the range of this outcome is is a couple weeks to done for the season. It was a bad scene where when Dalvin went down, I mean, he was writhing in, in pain. Both teams immediately went down to one knee, and they were surrounding him. He ended he, up getting, He looked like he was in a lot of pain. Yeah, I mean, he got carted off. He was distraught. It was, it was, it sucked, man. It was really unfortunate. Uh, DeAndre Swift day to day with a shoulder sprain. There was more concern initially, but this is that's good news that he he's going to make it back. Darren Waller exited with a knee strain. MRI showed he avoided a major knee injury. No timeline given on his uh, situation. Debo Samuel in Week Twelve after scoring multiple touchdowns. In fact, he may be the number one wide receiver on the week with no receptions. No, he. You, I, I thought he got one. I don't know if he had one. I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'll uh, double check, it. double check. But he had like 79 yards rushing or something. Yeah, he he got a catch. He did. Yeah. Um, Trey Sermon exited with an ankle injury. So Debo, it was a groin injury in the third, ah! third quarter, and uh, he looked upset, and he may miss time. Uh, Ceedee Lamb expected to play in Week 13 after the concussion. Okay. Okay. The Cowboys are considering giving Zeke time off to heal. 
Ugh. This could be one of those. I don't like this news section. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> this is terrible. But I'm going to spin this one. Like, if you want to spin the McCaffrey positively, he's already got the buy. They're not going to force him back out on the field. You might not be in that situation where it's like, oh, do I play him? Do I not play him? Sure. The And he did try to come back in that game. He just wasn't himself. So there, there's something to be said about, you know, it could swell up. It could be way worse. But he did try to get back in. Zeke is dealing with a bruised knee. He may need a week off, and your fantasy playoffs aren't next week. So this could be better in the end for Zeke managers than a hobbled Zeke fighting through it. Um, but Zeke said, no one has come up and asked me to rest. If they bring it up to me, I've got to do what they think is best for the team. I'll leave it at that. So we'll see. Miles Sanders played through an ankle injury, suffered in the second half. Dan Arnold, MCL sprain. Oh, the postman. It's, it's the holidays, man. Yeah. You can't miss four to six. Yeah, and uh, Pat Fryermuth even exited. The invincible oh. Muth. Look, he got head, head injury. At least he got Luth. He did get Luth again. He, he, He's he, just. I mean, the Muth is probably never not Luth. Jason, but he has, got Luth. Again. Jason has been joking about Muth outperforming Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts had a fifth consecutive single digit week. Fryer Muth scored again. Like, if he's healthy, how do yeah. you not play him over Kyle Pitts? I, I That's another discussion agree. today. Yeah. Uh, Kareem Hunt was held out um, of the final off offensive possession due to a stiff leg. <laughs> what? What? I didn't, I didn't see this. I didn't see a stiff leg. Brooks, what is this? That, that's do we have was, any experts on to talk about that? That's what was reported, so... It says a stiff leg, like a rigor mortis situation. <laughs> what? Huh? Due to stiff leg. That's all we got. <laughs> Al, Al, are you on uh, the mic? Yes, sir. Uh, I need this to be your top priority. <laughs> I want you to research this and use whatever resources necessary. I mean, Spare no expense. I, I understand you. it. He had a calf injury and it, it probably tightened up. But, yeah, but I'm picturing the whole leg like, is not able to bend. <laughs> Do we have to go with that verbiage? I don't know why. There's a better way to describe the injury. <laughs> I cannot not picture a horse on its side with all the legs straight. <laughs> I'm imagining like he's walking like a yeah, like, like a it's pirate. A, it's a it's a wooden leg. <laughs> Did he miss time with a wooden leg? <laughs> Al will figure it out. Oh right. Um. Randall Cobb, groin injury, left the game. He was dominating. Yeah, he was playing great. Uh, and then Aaron Rodgers said his fractured toe felt good for most of the game. He's going to decide, um, undergo further testing tomorrow. I mean, he outran Jalen Ramsey to score a touchdown in this game. So whatever uh, situation his toe was in with whatever immunization his foot got, uh, he was feeling good. Right. Logan Thomas expected to be activated for week 12 for Come the on, Monday, Logan. Monday night game. Save, save the tight end position, Logan. It's it's all up to you. Because it's terrible. No, it's it's a mess. Um, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. They need a separate alert in Sleeper. You get the wow when you get right. breaking news. You need one that's like, yeah, for the injury news. And then, yeah. I mean, then you then you can look with like apprehension at your yeah, phone. Like, I'm not like, looking. Oh, gosh, I'm not looking no. right now. Uh, before we get into the studs and the duds, want to thank today's sponsors, Rothy's. Say goodbye to the break in period you usually have to go through with other shoes. Rothy's soft, flexible material combined with wildly comfortable insoles make them seriously one of the most wearable shoes you can own. They're designed to be incredibly versatile, which means you can rock them with a suit, a pair of sweatpants, everything in between. If dirty sneakers are your pet peeve, rest easy. Rothy's shoes are 100% machine washable thanks to their sustainably made material, so you never have to worry about dirty dirtying them up. I have a pair of Rothy's. I got the driving loafers. They're yeah, sharp, I I got man. Those too. I got the, uh, the they're like a green olive, and they're not joking. Like they're comfortable. They, it's a it's a nice house shoe. I I imagine you can drive very well, and they're called I've driven driving. In them. I've driven in them. Yeah. Did you feel extra special? Yeah, I mean it was a little bit better going out for fast food in those driving <laughs> loafers. <laughs> they're good shoes. And I, good shoes, and I do. I love my. I love the Rothies. They're comfortable. They're clean. They're fashionable. To help you get a head start on holiday shopping this year, Rothies is doing something special. That's right. 
They gave us a chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash footballers. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash footballers. Head to rothys.com slash footballers to snag a pair of men's or women's shoes for yourself or someone else. And uh, Foot Clan, before we get into the studs, I mean, I have to talk about Liquid Death. Oh, Liquid Death! I mean, they- <laughs> do you want? Are you writing something for him? Liquid Death? If you don't know what it is, is my favorite sponsor of all time. Liquid Death! It's a water brand, and if you've seen these, I mean, the first time I saw a Liquid Death can was at a Fourth of July party. Al Borland was walking around in it. I thought it was a a tall boy, like a, a can of new beer. I was like, "What is that?" Yeah. It's Mountain Spring water. And he said, it's, it's liquid death. It's liquid. <laughs> He's like, I'm murdering my thirst right now. <laughs> and he murdered it. He murdered his thirst in broad daylight. Yeah. Which should be illegal, but it's not. And uh, Because it's your thirst. Because it's your thirst. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you've got you got to brutally murder it with liquid death. <laughs> my son, I told you this before, I got him to take one of the cans to school as an ex- a social experiment. Right. Because he's so cool that he's got to a liquid death 16 ounce can of water he came home he had leather pants oh, covered man. in spikes that's right <laughs> a mohawk that's right <laughs> uh you can get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash footballers that's the favorite url i've ever had liquiddeath.com slash footballers or grab some it's at Whole Foods, Sprouts, and 7-Eleven, so you can check it out there as well. They got a sparkling one. They do. And have, still. It's, it's good I like stuff. the sparkling more, even more than the, the natural spring water, but fully recyclable. They don't just murder do, 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 thirst. Do, 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 do. They murder pollution. <laughs> that's right. I don't right. know if you knew that. Oh, oh, I'm in on that. Double murder is the... <laughs> I mean, that's what you got to do. Liquid death. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Why don't I have a liquid death right now on the on the table? Might be too extreme. Too extreme. Jay, Jay Grizz drank it. That's what, and he he drinks the can as he well. He drinks the can. <laughs> I I'm with you, man. I'm the the tongue is not uh, cooperating with the mind right now. The Foot Clan receives the full picture, the full emotional picture of us when we host the show, and uh, it's it's been a wild one. I want to go back. <laughs> Take me back <laughs> to before the weekend. Uh, Josh Allen, stud, big week, four touchdown passes. Big half. Quarterback one in fantasy football <laughs> the, on the year. Josh Allen was the only thing bringing me hope as I watched the Cleveland Browns and Ravens play last Yay! night. Ooh, he was excellent. Uh, because Josh Allen was, in fact, not excellent for – the majority of the first half, then turned it on and ends up with a monster game over the second half. And Him he, and Dawson Knox. He ended up 23 for 28 for 260 and four. I had to make that Brady Allen decision, and I was getting chided on the old social media yep. for my Allen choice before he finally did wake up. Aaron Rodgers, 307 and two, scored a rushing touchdown, quarterback seven on the year. With nine toes. That's right. Uh, d- just to brag about it. Uh, Dak, 32 for 47. 47 passing attempts, 375 and two. Bounce back week, despite no Lamb, no Cooper. Plays on Thursday night, may have no Zeke in that one. Wait, they gave him back to back Thursday? And the Saints? Because of the Thanksgiving, yeah. <sighs> That's rude. Matthew Stafford, 21 for 38, 302 and three. To be honest, this was one of those games where that was more a product of the game script and the fact that they were constantly coming back in this one, but gets Jacksonville next week. Did you know build a connection a little bit with Odell Beckham in this game, Van Jefferson, Cooper Cup. I think Beckham and Cup had the same amount of targets in this one, 10 targets each. Interesting. Uh, yeah, run- Cup was very quiet for most yeah. of the game. Yep. The uh, Leonard Fournette. Oh, holy crap. <sighs> There was, there was a point in the morning when we were watching the game and Ronald Jones had come in and Mike goes, this is not good. Yeah, because last week the same thing where Ronald Jones was getting drives and it felt like, are they turning this into a full timeshare to get ready for the playoffs? No. Let me blow your mind. Okay. Okay. 
Leonard Fournette, by the way, 17 for 100, three touchdowns on the ground, seven for 31 and one uh, receiving touchdown, four on the week. On the year, Leonard Fournette, Austin Eckler, 4.5 yards of carry. Leonard Fournette, Austin Eckler, 51 receptions. Leonard Fournette, Austin Eckler, what? seven rushing touchdowns. What? So Leonard Fournette is now the RB6 on the year. Craziness. Joe Mixon, 28 for 165 and two, looked great on every snap. His fantasy finishes over the last six games, four, 22, two, four, three, two. I mean, he's the running back two since week six. If you want to know what I hoped for when he was a my guy last year, <laughs> this before Burrow went out, <laughs> right, which was problematic to the running game. This is the Joe Mixon that we have the potential of seeing when you get 28 carries, when your offense dominates the way they did. They have they have totally transitioned into a a run first team over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Burrow's passing totals yardage totals are low i mean game scripts again for for this one uh, the Bengals got off to a quick lead quick turnover and then it turned into a and then there was they had the lead then there was a pick six and it was let's just run this game out i didn't even mention big ben when we were talking about things that made the weekend depressing well because you can only take so much i know other than jonathan taylor is mixing the running back you'd want rest of the season oh, i mean seems that way it's it's so bizarre that I still don't think of him that way, and that's not fair. And he gets the Chargers this <laughs> in week 13. I mean, it's, and then at home against San Francisco, two it, home games in a row. So in the past six weeks, he has been in the top four in five of them. Yeah. That's outrageously good. Yeah, and, and super consistent, oh. which is what you want as well. Impressive. Um. I don't know if you saw the breaking news this morning, by the way, Mike McCarthy in eight other positive tests in Dallas for COVID. Uh -oh. So could have some implications Thursday game. Yeah. I'm sure people are going to be missing at least in the coaching staff, but we don't know about players and they were already dealing with. Wasn't uh, Amari. Wasn't he a positive he, case? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was uh, the most. Uh, we got an update guys. we got a stiff leg update. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Kareem Hunt's leg was tight, which is why he wasn't on the field. Oh, that's usually good. So the reporter decided to translate leg was tight into stiff leg. Mm, I yeah. see. With some, uh, some, yeah. some verbal gymnastics there. Sure. We've been. Got to get those we've clicks. Done it. Uh, Mike Cordero Patterson, 16 for 108. This was the first hundred yard rusher for the Falcons in the last 22 games. Two touchdowns on the ground. Cordero Patterson is the RB8 on the year. It's craziness. Cordero Patterson. Stud. Yeah, bona fide stud. I mean, he is the offense. He, one, wasn't like you would you had hoped he would play because he was coming off the ankle injury. You didn't know. It was a game-time decision. He goes in immediately, uh, I think in the first quarter, tweaks the ankle. On on a gets tackled low, goes down, looks hobbled, and, and then just comes back in and has even more production. So it, Patterson, if you scooped him up in week one, you're living living the good life. He has scored forty one percent of the team's touchdowns. Yep, checks out. Uh, Elijah Mitchell dominated, twenty seven for one thirty three and one six targets, five for thirty five. This was. He had 70% of snaps, 91% share of the backfield touches. Who is who is the snap goblin in San Francisco? Is it Elijah or is it Debo? Because if you have Debo, you don't like Elijah Mitchell getting carries. And if you have Elijah, you don't like Debo I getting think the if carries. you have Debo, you're fine with Elijah getting carries because Debo's on the field doing other stuff. Okay. But – he has not, Elijah Mitchell, has not handled less than 72% of the backfield touches. John Daigle tweeted that out. Seven full games he's played. I think there were people who thought because I had spent massive fab on him early that it, a lot of people did that the rosy prognosis for, for Elijah was just biased, but he, he owns the backfield. Jeff yes. Wilson is a, a debatable cut. I mean, he. I think had one touch in the game. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean he was useless. And that's what Trey Sermon being hurt. I mean, that's well, right. I, well, because Debo is a running back now. 
And Debo might be missing time. So I know, don't cut Jeff yet. It's just crazy because Jeff wasn't good when he was alone. Yeah. Uh, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams, Josh Jacobs, Miles Gaskin. The gas man broke the red light, green light, and uh, delivered another huge game. I mean, 18 points, 17 points, 5, 13, 7, 15. I mean, he's he's going to be in the top 15 on the year at this point. And uh, Dontrell Hilliard, Mike, 12 for 132 and 1. He was Had some juice. Uh, on Sunday Live, he was one of the break glass in case of emergency players. Oh, boy. I, w- I mean, I didn't expect I didn't expect twelve for one thirty one. He had a huge breakaway touchdown. Uh, it will be running back for the Titans in case. Yes, need, yes. that would be one we need to specify. And, and Deontay Foreman didn't have a bad game either. Uh, no, against the Patriots, they're going into their bye week, and it's it's hard to gauge right now. Does the team like Hilliard enough that when Jeremy McNichols is back from his concussion, that this is what they stay with? So it, that'll be a discussion for tomorrow's waiver show. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather play Javante Williams or Miles Gaskin rest of season locked into your lineup? Because you look at their game logs. They're very right. similar with on game, off game. Um, the snap counts for the Broncos, Gordon was 53%. Javante was 47%. Touches were Gordon 18, Javante 17. So you, I, for that, I got to look at the schedule. The Giants, that's fine, but then you have a bye week for the Miami Dolphins. Jets, that's fantastic. Saints and Tennessee on the road to close out the season, though. So I, I'm gonna. Is go, that to close out the fantasy season? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna go with Javante. All right. AJ Dillon, twenty for sixty nine. Dude, it, it, nice. It, I yeah, it is nice, and I understand. Like, if you're just box score hunting and going. Well, that's not very many yards on that many carries. He also scored in the, in the air. Yeah, he he had five targets, caught all five of them. A.J. Dillon continuing to ball out when it comes to the, the targets and the receptions. But these were like – they the defense knew exactly what was coming, and it was the Rams rushing defense. So A.J. Dillon was up against it, but he just kept getting hard yards. And it is – was there that cackling back there from the hard yards? Oh, yeah, sorry. I got me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me let me give you AJ, some perspective over the last three weeks. Okay. 294 attempts is the pace. Okay. 73 targets is the pace. This He's is, caught every pass thrown his way in the last three weeks. This is we're, – we're, we're, we're not through this season yet, but this is troubling for next year. For uh, – And the, I guess and for the remainder of the season, yeah. If, with A.J. Dillon proving himself to the team, how do you not – Get him on the field more. I'm all in on that. I'm all in. I've made the transition because AJ Dillon does things that that yeah, they're Aaron very, Jones cannot do. And yeah, and period. Jones does things that Dillon cannot. They're very different players, very complementary. And the way that running backs are used these days, and the way that they're breaking down, how do you not feed AJ Dillon in those giant quads? And how do you not give him short yardage? How do you not give him goal line? How do you not give him end of game and targets? Yeah. Like the, the giant man has soft hands. Oh, they're so soft. Oh, yeah, he is. Woo! Jalen Waddle, nine for 137 and one. He's now the wide receiver, 14 on the year, 10 targets. Absolutely massive game. Looks great. Has a rapport with Tua. Has the Giants coming up. And then the buy and then the Jets. So. Jalen Waddle could be on championship rosters this year. He certainly could be, and he. It was it was tough to buy into Waddle. Not the not the talent, not the draft capital, but it was always these guys are coming back. The the Will Fuller is coming back. Devontae Parker is coming back. Maybe they're not. <laughs> Maybe they're just never coming back. And Jalen Waddle is actually this good. We finally had a. Uh, uh, Look, what looked like a, a downfield shot. You saw the yards after catch. He is he is a good wide receiver. Will Fuller's on a one year deal. Like oh he, yeah, he's gone next he, year. He's just irrelevant to the future plans of this team. And um, Waddle's been so impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam Thielen had two more touchdowns. Wide receiver seven on the year. There were two things we said before the year that were going to happen that 
the fantasy world was probably just ourselves included was probably undervaluing. It was Adam Thielen and it was parts of the Rams offense. It was like these two things are just sliding underneath the surface, and sure enough, like Thielen is just cruising along. He's he, he he's, cannot. He's unstoppable in the red zone. I don't understand how it happens, but he, like that's where he makes his money. He even had a. I think he had a pretty long. Uh, his second touchdown was a little longer, was, but I mean, he has nine touchdowns in the red zone this year. Nine of his ten touchdowns on yeah. the year. <laughs> he's unstoppable. Yeah. The. Uh, the I think Kyle said he drop kicked the TD regression metrics in the face. Yes. Yes, he did. Mike, your guy. I'm going to call him your guy. That's Kendrick, fine. Kendrick Bourne, six targets, five for 61 and two. I don't know how he got down the sideline with four guys tried to push him out. Ooh, just tiptoeing through the tulips, man. But Kendrick Bourne's a fun player to watch, to be honest with you. He made two great touchdown receptions. He's averaged a touchdown every six catches this year. So you're like, why does he barely play? Well, when he plays, they go to him. They, and Jacoby Myers had a good game, too. Yeah, finally. Jacoby. Once he benched him. Uh, <laughs> speaking of players that had a good game that – Probably on your probably bench. Probably on your yeah. bench. I mean, I didn't think you should start him. T. Higgins ended up with six for 114 in one. So, what do you do now? Uh, a, whole, a whole season of disappointment, a huge breakout game. But, uh, I mean, how many passing yards did Joe Burrow have? Uh, we'll look it up. I know that uh, Jamar Chase is probably showing up in the other section of this show. Yeah. Joe Burrow had 190 yards. So he had 190 yards and Richard, uh, sorry, uh, Higgins and T. Higgins ended up with 114 of them. That's a good market share. Yeah. If you can keep that up. So I guess <laughs> Chargers next week. Tough secondary. Debo. One catch. Six for 66 and two on the ground. Is that right? I, I believe had, so, yeah. I thought he had more rushing yards nope. than that. Okay. But Debo just continues to get it done. Two touchdowns on the ground. He has scored on the ground three straight weeks. So, beat goes on for the number two overall wide receiver in fantasy. Oof. What did you make of the DJX game? Three for 102 and one on Thanksgiving. I mean, he, he had the big play to start off the game. Uh, I believe he had the first touchdown of the game. Not that anyone would track that for any financial reasons uh and then then i mean he's just he's a part-time player it was it was nice to see him have some of the speed still left but he's not someone i'm going to count on van jefferson nine targets three for 93 and one odell beckham 10 targets five for 81 and one uh, both players heavily involved 10 targets for cooper cup i mean you talk about target distribution it was perfectly even Across all three players, Cup still went seven for ninety six. So a quiet, nice game mm -hmm. for Cup. Didn't score, but all three players played basically every single snap of the game, which is something you want to see in fantasy. Yep, probably means that Van Jefferson is undervalued. Yeah, he, I mean he's a he's a weekly play. He's not a I wouldn't call him a wide receiver too, but a flex. Would you rather have him or Beckham? <sighs> probably, probably Beckham. I feel it, like maybe Van Jefferson's more reliant on a big play. Yeah. But, but obviously Beckham had to have the big play this week to perform too. And if Cooper Cup just gets his throw slightly in the uh, in, in the 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 bounds of, of where you can be in, then Van Jefferson would have had two. That's right. Tight end studs. Jack Doyle. <laughs> Six for 81 and one. <laughs> what? Nobody played him. Baby hands. But you know who they did play, Mike? They yes. played Dawson Knox, three for 32 and two. He's still the tight end six on the year despite missing two weeks. Yep. Rob Gronkowski, start of the week, seven for 123. Gronk is here to stay. Yes, he is. Mark Andrews, 10 targets, four for 65 and one. Ridiculous uh, catch. Yes. Although the one-hander? Yeah. Now, did It that, did count. It did? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was pretty sure that when that started – because the, the catch and the yards for Lamar, they didn't show up right away. And uh, so people were panicking, but they did count. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, 10 of those targets, he caught four of them. The defense caught four of them as well. Yep. Yeah, when you target it, what, he had four interceptions when targeted. <sighs> Lamar forced the ball. to. Now, if he had not done that, two of those four interceptions, you would have won? That is correct. All right. Dalton Schultz. Seven targets, three for 46 and one, had one called back as well. 
the doctor was working on the holidays. Yeah, Jason start of the week. I think he had ended up number one in my rankings going into the weekend at tight end. Schultz? Yeah, which obviously he didn't finish number one, but he was up there. Friar Muth, four for 40 and one. Uh, he's in a, an elite category now of rookie tight ends with six plus touchdowns. Hawkinson ended up scoring and Joku scored. Uh, Jimmy Graham scored. So I won $100. Yes, pe the people were very excited for that bet. Yeah, Jimmy Graham scored before Will Disley. This is a very important bet on the show. So that's why Jason's not here today. <laughs> is he is, he's out trying to find $100? He is. No, he's just embarrassed. I mean, oh. he, he put his. Uh, yes. He didn't bet on Jimmy Graham, which is a safe bet. And uh, <laughs> he's sad. Shall we move on to uh, the more depressing section of the show? Yeah. Pooped in his big boy pants. I don't know how to feel with Cam Newton because I I was the one of the three of us that was like, I can't believe you guys have confidence in him against Washington. He goes out against Washington, he's fine for fantasy. Right. But then he just lays just an egg of eggs. I mean, five for 21, two picks, both were ugly. Yep. Um, got benched in the fourth quarter. Also true. Matt Rule comes out and says, yeah, he's going to be the starting quarterback, but some convoluted response about like, but, you know, he hasn't seen a lot of the pressure in the fourth quarter, so we wanted to get P.J. in there. We didn't want Cam to get hit, but it, it implied like, oh, we're cool with P.J. getting hit. That's not nice. Um, what in the way can you – does this game disqualify him from, from you being able to play him? He's got <sighs> the bye, so it doesn't yeah. matter that week, but then Atlanta – um, two more weeks of practice with the team. Yeah, let's let's wait and see what the, the news is because that matchup against the Falcons that's juicy. Lamar Jackson got to got to put his worst career fantasy performance for Mike in the dud section. Yeah, four picks. Yep. Yeah. That uh, for those counting along at home. Uh, my my starting quarterback the last two weeks for my most important league that would be eight combined interceptions. So um, you and you don't win. Do, do when you, you not? When you don't, you don't win. Negative eight. That's a two QB league, right, Mike? No, oh. no. That's a, that's thank oh. you, thank you for clarifying that though, Brooks. Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady was a dud this week. Yeah, he was. And and Jalen Hurts was as well. Jalen Hurts was way worse. Jalen Hurts, when we were doing our um, our DraftKings lineups, you know, for the Wheel of Shame. Yes. When I approached the lineup this week, I I was like, you know, this kind of a cash game thing going on with us. Like, I just can't finish last, which thankfully, another reason Jason's not here. He lost that. But I picked Jalen Hurts because I literally tried to be the safest I could be. I tried to go with the safest quarterback imaginable. And, and, and Jalen Hurts throws three picks, no, no touchdowns. I mean, statistically – to that week, that would have been the safest bet. All these articles started coming out Sunday morning. Maybe the maybe the Eagles don't have to compete for a quarterback. Maybe they got their guy. I was talking about it on Sunday Live. Do they have their guy? Do we still not know? Uh, we still. I, I mean, they lost. They lost. It was a bad game. His QB rating was seventeen. When he plays like this, Devontae Smith is irrelevant. The, it's it's so tough. Yeah, the, the team is irrelevant. I mean. But, I think Boston Scott ended up with an okay game. Yeah, and then Tom Brady, by the way, getting back to him, only one touchdown, 226, 11 fantasy points, not a good week. I want to give a lot of credit to the Colts, though, in this game. The Colts are playing great football. And especially on the defensive side. So I think that they're going to be somebody that's viable in a tough defensive matchup in certain games, but they still got it done on offense. Uh, their defense is good, and they, the, the Buccaneers took care of it, but – um, Brady, not a big week. Running back duds. Oh, let me go with the um, the two guys that I started in our listener league. Najee Harris and Nick Chubb, who combined to score like five fantasy points each. The Just completely gone. The Najee Harris one, if you watch the game, it makes sense. It was just a complete blowout, and then at that point, But that didn't why? that hasn't made sense all year for him. Like He's always at least PPR'd his way to victory right but i'm saying it, it got out of control so so quickly that he that they put other running backs in as what i'm saying is is what happened right it really unfortunate that the nick chubb 
one is that one is shocking. Like I know that you know eight for Land- sixteen. Landry was having himself a fine game. Great. You're a running team. You have Nick Chubb, you know, one of the highest paid running backs in football. You have Kareem Hunt, a one of the better running backs in football, and you gave them a combined fifteen carries. It was in, in very a game that bizarre. was pretty close for a long time. Yes. Very strange. And then now you have this news that Jack Conklin oh, yeah. is probably going to miss the rest of the year. Hmm. So there could be some, you know, Nick Chubb's always been a re- better real runner than a fantasy. Because like, he doesn't catch any passes. Yeah, I mean, if you just translated Nick Chubb, the regular runner, he'd be the number one, you know, in, in fantasy or arguably. But it's not that way for how his NFL game translates to fantasy points. And now you have Conklin's injury where – if you need him to be effective only on the ground, this could be problematic going into fantasy playoffs for Good. Nick Chubb managers. The the other side of the Dylan game, I mean, Aaron Jones, 10 for 23 on the ground. He was a last second active it in this game. It seems like he should not have been active. I mean, not good. Saquon Barkley, 13 for 40. I mean, and he had a big run in this game, so the rest of his touches were worthless. Four for 13 on the ground, disappointing. Considering they won the game, Philly has been he had a thirty he had a thirty two yard run. Which means what? Twelve for eight? <laughs> yeah. On the other carries? <laughs> yes. It, that's what it would mean. And then two games on the road, Miami and the Chargers coming up. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yikes. Let's just spread Christmas. What's the opposite of Christmas cheer? Jeer. Jeer? Yes. This is Christmas jeer. Uh Devontae Freeman. Thirteen or sixteen for fifty two. That's fine. He, yeah, I mean the it, he's still the main running back. Ramondre. Not a big week for Ramondre. Couldn't have not good flex numbers as Buffalo next week in Buffalo. Damian Harris got the touchdown, so Ramondre is it's a tenuous start. You know, Bolden had all the catches in this one. No catches for Ramondre. Is he a bench? Uh, yeah, probably. the The bigger question for me is, what do you do with like? I mean, Damian Harris scored, but other than the, but he had eleven carries in a game that they were. Yes. Ahead and yeah, it's the, the the whole Patriots backfield looks like it might be back to the uh they threw the, ball the old well. tricks. They threw the ball yeah. well. Rex Burkhead twelve for twenty seven. <laughs> what yeah. do you know? I mean that's that's Texan stat line right there. David Johnson ten for thirty nine. Three point nine a carry, under two point seven a carry for Rex. The Jets finally found a running back combination they could stop. They did. They did. <laughs> it, it, we knew that it was bad rushing defense meets bad running backs. Yes. And um, there you go. And the Jets t- took the victory there. Jamar Good. Chase. Are we getting a little slow down here? I mean, he's the wide receiver 41 since week eight. Just three targets, three for 39. It's a it's a big slowdown. I mean, finished wide receiver 27, 48. The bye week, 27 and 50. Over the past month, Jamar Chase is averaging – under four receptions, and 38 receiving yards. Woof. Yes. But, I mean, I'm st- I'm going to stick with Jamar Chase. I'm going to keep playing him. He's very, very good. Kenny Galladay. No. No, don't. <laughs> and? <laughs> Are you done with Kenny G? Yes. Uh, Michael Pittman. Yeah. Three for 50. <laughs> um, four, four for 53 it's not that bad yeah i mean 10 targets the tampa bay buccaneers are a lethal secondary it's not that bad but i really wanted to sneak in yeah a bad pity hey, drop. That's, that's fair i mean i you know he's been out he's been 30 or or lower for the past three weeks Houston next week is that yeah. Gonna, let's get back on track. Is that gonna fix it? We'll rebuild that city. I will say he had a couple plays where it was his fault too. He did. Um, Mike Williams eight targets four for thirty nine. <laughs> you know these games where this offense just poof. You know they lost to Denver. They they couldn't get it going. It was a very we said at the top. It was a very very strange Sunday of football that was topped off by the injuries at the end. Emmanuel Sanders just three for twenty eight. This has been a lot of weeks in a row. In fact, yeah. since week eight, he's the wide receiver 61. I think he's droppable with Dawson Knox back. Would you agree? I 
yeah, uh, he's not someone that uh, you, you don't have, have to. You don't yeah. have to drop him. I mean, we'll give you some options tomorrow on the waiver show. Uh, but Patriots, Bucks, Carolina, uh, those are three pretty tough matchups. Uh, who else? Devontae Smith, four targets, two for 22. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, and then you had the two. Godwin and Evans were bad too. So – a lot of correlation between these bad quarterbacks and bad wide receivers today. Elijah Moore, I don't know what to think of the game. I mean, it was a disappointing fantasy output, but he did have eight targets from Zach Wilson. Corey Davis was out, but Zach Wilson seems like a problem. Would you agree? I I don't disagree. Elijah Moore moving forward. T. Higgins or Elijah Moore rest of the season? Oh, my gosh. Um... Probably, probably Elijah. Okay. Yeah, but not not by much though. You should probably throw to your best wideout more often. Eight eight targets. How many times did Wilson actually throw the ball? Mike, I need help. Oh, I'm here for you. Kyle Pitts. <laughs> two for twenty six on six targets. There were several though. He was open. Matt Ryan just missed guys. But he's averaging five fantasy points per game. I mean. Are you just riding him into the playoffs and hoping for the athleticism to trump all the big games to help you? Or are you actively looking to find a better solution? If you – I think you're locked in. I'm at, so disappointed. At this point. Yeah, I, I don't blame you because you you got the taste. I got two huge games. Yeah, which – Back-to-back, back, 163 yards. Yeah, I mean, I remember because we played each other. So, Kyle Pitts, two, no wonder. two good games. <laughs> I have magical powers you do. this year. But you got you got the taste. 119 and one, followed up by seven for one sixty three. I mean, I understand you chased that dragon for for a multiple months after that. But at, at this point, I mean trade deadlines are likely through and off the waiver wire. I don't know who you're gonna find. Nobody. And then and some of the guys you'd find off the waiver wire are in this segment. Tyler Conklin, two for 25. Noah Fart, Fant. Noah <laughs> Fant, three for 12. Austin Hooper, no catches. Zero. I don't like this week. Hunter Henry didn't score, so he's two for 16. So to me, you still have to go with hopes and dreams, I guess. Yep. I mean, Tyler Higby, one for three. George Kittle, one for 13. How did that? I mean, that one was surprising. In a game where Debo has one catch... You also had George Kittle with one catch. I mean, Brandon Ayuk was viable in the receiving game. Yes, he was. And then Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard had one target for, or wait, one catch for zero yards? No. That what? is correct. No. That's what they paid for? <laughs> Jalen Hurts can make you disappear. He's a, he's a great magician. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. They have an Elijah Mitchell signed jersey for $13.65 right now. It ends tonight, the auction does. These are all uh, – that was a Beckett hologram. They have a JSA certified Justin Jefferson jersey, $52.50. Ends tonight. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. Look, Brooks, I know you wanted to win, man. But you didn't have to take out all my running backs. Do what you got to do. <laughs> You play to win. I would have let, I mean, if you had just come to me before the match and said, hey, I want the W or else, <laughs> I would have, I might have complied. You didn't get the ransom note with no, all the I magazine mean, cutout like, letters? I didn't even get the choice. And now they, now I don't have any running backs. I Sorry, just don't, man. I don't understand. We employ you. I know you don't need the money. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I just feel like you could, you could play it straight up. You could play fair. I don't, I don't get it, man. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Bummed not, out. Not mad. Not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> All right. Jason will be back for tomorrow's episode. He, he is traveling. He is coming back into town today. He thought he was going to get back in yesterday. He is back in town today, or uh, and then he'll be back on the show tomorrow, but he'll be spinning the wheel of shame on Friday, and that's really what matters. That's the important part of fantasy. Uh, the one, shame. The, shame is the most important part. The one thing I uh, that is not bringing shame upon my household this week. Everything else is. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're we're buried. We're underwater. You, you've, but you've I, had a rough one. But I won't have a stupid wig on. No. That guy will. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.